I want to go straight to Michael Kugerman. He is Deputy Director and Senior Associate for South Asia at the Wilson Centre, joining us to understand the implications of this new Afghan leadership. And Michael, thanks for your time. As you heard there, this new cabinet contains no women, no civilians, and the interior minister is a designated US terrorist. The Taliban says that they've changed, but this is nothing but hard line, isn't it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, this, this government really represents the worst case scenario for those that had hoped that there would be a modicum of inclusivity um, and diversity within this government. But frankly, I don't think we should be surprised. I don't think we should be surprised at all. Uh, yes, the Taliban had promised that there would be some inclusivity in their government, but they had never indicated that the top spots, that the minister positions would be filled by anyone from areas outside of the Taliban. And that's exactly what we've had. I think the best that can be hoped for is that in due course, once the Taliban begins appointing mid-level and lower level leaders, that's where you may have some non-Taliban leaders and also some women uh, brought in. But clearly, since they'll be at lower levels, they're not going to have all that much power or that much influence. So basically, you're looking at a situation where, for the foreseeable future, uh, Afghanistan will be led by senior Taliban leaders who include, in many cases, the worst of the worst. Uh, when you talk about uh, folks from the Haqqani Network, for example, which is known as the most brutal faction of the, of the Taliban. So how will the United States and other Western powers engage? We know that the US and the Taliban have a common enemy in ISIS-K. Is there opportunity for collaboration there or would that be a bad idea? Well, I think that no matter what the government is going to look like, you're going to have players in the West, including the US, engaging with the Taliban, even if on unofficial levels. In the immediate term, that will entail trying to work with the Taliban to ensure that those still trying to get out of the country will be able to get out. I'm referring to foreigners here, Americans that are still there that want to get out and so on. And I think that um, uh, you know the West is going to want to engage with the Taliban to ensure that the Taliban will provide access to uh, humanitarian agencies trying to deliver um, supplies to Afghanistan. Um, but indeed, I think that this government makes it, that the fact that you have this government looking like it does makes it even less likely that uh, Western countries will recognize the Taliban regime and have formal relations. I think that a number of regional players like China, Russia, Pakistan, some other countries that are not in the West may be willing to recognize the government because for them, assurances of inclusivity and rights are not that important. Whereas for the Western countries, you know, they really are looking for indications of inclusivity and rights, which I think it's really a, a fool's errand to think that that could happen. So bottom line is you will see yeah. Western countries engaging with the Taliban, but on unofficial levels, not formal levels.